Dorothy? Uh, yeah, Luca, talk about winning the defensive player uh, belt today. How do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess it was because of that block in the end of the game, you know. <laughs> I guess it was because of that. I got, oh, I got two steals. Yeah, it's okay. I deserve it. But don't say I don't deserve it, so. But I'll take it. Okay, and the last one will be in Spanish with Well, hell. holy crap, if that is not a fantastic Mavericks victory here. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, how on earth did this team win this game? This was not a game that, frankly, Dallas deserved to win. They should have wet the bed effectively in those closing moments. Luka misses the chance for the and one that could have potentially tied the game moments earlier. Then worse, he misses a free throw. And that should be it. Like ESPN stats and info has the probability at like 94.8% or something like that. Likely that Memphis wins that game. And this is why this was such a crucial game for the Mavericks. With a win, Dallas would move to within one game of Portland. But with a loss they would move to only a half game up on the Grizzlies. And the Grizzlies are currently the eight seed. That's how close we're talking. By winning this game, by inexplicably winning this game, and I'll, I'll get into the how in a second, you now move to a two and a half lead on the Grizzlies. Again, head-to-head, -head and you get the season head-to-head -head tiebreaker there, so even more leverage for that. And you now are a game back of Portland, which is huge. If you're going to have a chance to crawl out of the pit of the play-in game, that's how you're going to have to do it, is catching Portland. Now, here's the thing. If you don't move out, you're facing Memphis. That is your matchup. That is an entertaining matchup, but not one that I want to deal with. Because Valachunas beat the snot out of Dallas inside. You let Grayson Allen go for 23 points on you. Dude was dropping threes left and right. Although he made a critical pair of mistakes in the clutch. Here's how improbable it was. And you watched it, you know, but I'm just going to reiterate. Because what else are we doing here other than talking about what the hell happened? Luca misses the opportunity for the and one with like three seconds left. Splits free throws. Inbound, they get a 90% foul shooter at the line. You, you can't see the mic, so this effect just looks weird. But he misses both free throws. He misses both free throws. You get a key shot, but you get that shot because shout out to Dwight Powell for tracking down that board. You get one final opportunity. Uh, shout out as well to Mav DeLorean uh, on Twitter. Did I say Mav DeLorean as if it's the DeLorean from Back to the Future? Regardless, you know who you are. Shout out because he absolutely wordsmithed this explanation here. Memphis is so looking forward, so looking in anticipation for the step back from Luka, the step back three. They don't consider that he's going to step forward. And who would? Luka catches the ball on the inbound, has two Grizzlies right in front of him. Excuse me, like right at either side of him. Rather than stepping back and having a tough contest or staying where he is and having a tough contest, he leans forward. His foot is behind the line, visibly behind the line, but he leans forward and shoots a floater like an absolute madman. Luka Doncic shoots a floater from three at the buzzer nothing but net boom game just like that 114 113 dallas somehow wins grayson allen switches off on luca in transition and hey shout out as well to dorian finney smith he he's not setting a screen but it's basically setting a screen he's got his back to Grayson Allen, he's facing Luka, but he's just standing there basically shielding Grayson from having any additional effort at contesting the shot here. Again, Matt Valorian on Twitter, the the net, or sorry, the nets, what am I saying? I'm, I'm flustered right now, even just recounting it hours later. 
the Grizzlies were so looking in anticipation for the step back, they didn't consider a step forward. And so Luka ices the game, a game Dallas should not have won, a game that Memphis really, really played well in. And Dallas gets out of there with a win. Luka was, what, 3 of 10 on threes in the game, and that counts as one? Like, incredible Luka magic here. That's what you have to be able to do, though. If you, You're not always going to have your A game, but think about what the narrative would have been today if Dallas had lost. Three straight losses. You're now a half game up on the eight seed. We would be in absolute panic mode right now. Instead, we find ourselves saying, you know what? That's a quality win, and sometimes it just takes a little bit of that weird juju to work in your favor to turn things around because things started to slide a little bit between the end of that san antonio game and then the uh the 76 er game where you pretty much got your teeth kicked in so yeah things turn quickly in that regard and now you find yourself within striking distance of the trailblazers really great stuff here portland is 31 and 23. Dallas is now 30 and 24. The Blazers have lost two straight. You got an opportunity. And Dallas has not been good in recent weeks at capitalizing on these opportunities. So it's crucial, crucial that you do when they're there. And they did. They did in this case because of absolute Luka magic. This shot is probably more memorable than even his overtime forcing one in Portland as a rookie. I really think it is. like Not just because this one won the game and they lost that Portland one in overtime, but the difficulty and the oddity of it is just different. I know, that one he's falling away and out of bounds. It's incredible. They're both incredible. But this is just a special, memorable shot. Set the set NBA Twitter on fire. You had everyone from LeBron James, Tyson Chandler, all these guys just like, oh my God, are you serious? Incredible. Luka ends the game with... 29 points and 9 assists. Only 5 rebounds. A down, night, a down night for him in that regard. Uh, KP chips in 21 and 6. 7 of 13 shooting from KP. I like the shot selection he's hunting down lately. I feel like he's on the right track in that regard. But it is odd he doesn't get more looks in the fourth quarter. I think that is still a little bit of an, an oddity that is worthy of examination. Speaking of examination, I I need to confirm this. I don't remember Josh Richardson playing the fourth quarter, and we really might have to have a conversation about that because I had much, much higher hopes for Richardson when he came to Dallas. And in 27 minutes, he gives you 9-3-3 on 3-of-9 shooting. Not great, Bob. Not great. Meanwhile, having an impact off the bench for Dallas for the first time was J.J. Redick. 15 minutes, and he gives you nine points, three of four shooting, all of which are threes. Hey, that's why we brought you here, bro. That's all we want. Give us threes. Give us threes. Richardson's not right now. Give us threes. Richardson went one of three for three, so technically he gave you one, but I I digress. Hardaway Jr., 11 points, five of 11. I don't like when you're getting as many points as you're getting shots. Not that great. Uh, And... You know, Dodo didn't have a big game in terms of his point production, only 3 of 8 from the field, but I thought he had a really solid game as well. Hit a big 3 as well in that during uh, Dallas's push in the fourth quarter, in which this game was odd for Dallas because there wasn't a lot of middle ground to their performance. It either seemed like they were playing well, even on the defensive end, or like it was just a bit unglued. A lot of easy baskets, a lot of uh, uncontested looks for Memphis, and like I said, you got Grayson Allen lighting you up for 23 points. You got Valachunas going for 19 and 15 on you, like bullying KP inside. That's not good. That's not what you're wanting to see. And that's another reason why I'd rather not play them in the first round. But you, you gut it out. You get into an improbable situation where a 90% free throw shooter is at the line with a chance to ice the game. Makes both free throws. It's over. Makes one free throw. You're shooting for OT. Holy crap, he missed both. Now here you go, and here's a little healthy dose of Luka magic. Winning cures everything. 
just by making that shot, we don't talk about Luca missing out on the potential and one that would have tied it with seconds to go. We don't talk about him missing a clutch free throw that should have, for all intents and purposes, sank the Mavericks then. We instead are smiling from ear to ear because we can't comprehend just how in the hell Luka Doncic made this shot. Memphis by two, 1.8 remaining. Got to get it in. Here's Luka. Gets it away. It's gold! A Doncic dagger! He wins it three. as he was stumbling. He somehow got it to go. According to Mavs PR after the game on Twitter, this is Luka Doncic's 38th career game with 20 points, 20 plus points, 5 plus rebounds, 5 plus assists. Oh, you know what? I said career game. Not correct. 38th game with 20 plus, 5 plus, 5 plus assists this season, which is the most in the NBA ahead of now MVP by a mile front runner, Nikola Jokic. He has 37. So, yeah, there's a nice category where Luka's pacing, outpacing the guy that's probably going to win MVP this year. And uh, Luka led the NBA last year in those kind of games, too, with 50. Imagine that. This is uh, an incredible thing here. They also add, Mavericks PR does, that here's the tweet here. I'll read it verbatim. Luka Doncic is the first player in franchise history with multiple game-winning three-point buzzer beaters, regular season or playoffs. Doncic is the fourth Maverick with multiple buzzer beaters, joining Dirk Nowitzki, Monte Ellis, and Michael Finley. Pretty good company there. Pretty good company in that regard. So Dallas, man, they get a big key victory here a crucial victory that they absolutely had to have i'm all smiles man all i care about at the end of the day is just win we can talk about ugly wins we can talk about pretty wins we can talk about whether or not they deserve to win this game for how they executed through stretches but you know what no one puts the asterisk in the record books no one says well, yeah, okay, that might be their record, but uh, <laughs> Luca missed a clutch free throw before he made that shot, you know. No one cares. It, it's, not, it's not recorded in the context. Like, yeah, you can go down and find like a, a, a game summary or something that mentions it, but it doesn't matter. What matters is simply win versus loss. This is a win that you're happy to have. It makes it all the sweeter knowing that you were able to steal victory from the jaws of defeat in the closing moments because that was this team's probably greatest weakness last year. They could not perform in the clutch. Now, their defensive performance and defensive ranking in the clutch this year is still pretty bad. Uh, Tim McMahon had something on that. They rank like 29th in the NBA when it comes to their defensive efficiency rating in crunch time. Not great, Bob. Not great. Somewhere, my intern Bob is running around. He's not here right now. And he's about to get fired like Jeffrey. Anyway, so somewhere, damn it, Bob, you made me lose my train of thought. Regardless, you stole a victory. It makes it all the sweeter because we gave away a lot of those games. So to be able to take one back for ourselves and in such a key game in the season feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. So... We'll see if they can build on it. They've got a very favorable upcoming schedule here. Yeah, it looks like LeBron might be coming back before that kind of... I think it's a doubleheader against the Lakers. Um, LeBron might be back, but Anthony Davis is still kind of iffy on that regard. But you still have multiple games coming up with Sacramento. You've got, I think, the Wizards coming up. You've got the two games with the Lakers. The next stretch of games, you have a chance to really improve your stock. If you're going to make a big push, this is it. This is it, and it started last night, and thanks to Luka Legend, the Mavericks got things going by getting off on the right foot. So that's all my time for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. I've been Derek Kirby, or call me DDP. I don't care. I've been Derek. You've been awesome. Remember, until next time, every legend 
was once a prospect. Peace. From prospect to lizard.